Hello, this is the Deeds of God website presentation. What we're speaking about today is the second video in a series that explains how the human body seems to possibly have been constructed, designed, and made in the images of holy things, things that are spoken of and described in the Bible. This video is a continuation upon the first part of the body that the videos tackle, which is the head. The head is the governing part of a human body, and it seems that in most respects, our heads contain structures or have design features which resemble the throne room of God, the governing portion of all creation. Picking up here, this is a picture showing that we have eyes. No big news to some of you. But in the Bible, the eye is spoken of as the lamp of the body. And of course, we also know them as our witnesses. We witness thing with our, things with our eyes. Well, in the throne room, of, throne room of God, in the book of Revelations, chapter 4, 1, and 22, various um, creations are described that surround the throne of God. For instance, there are descriptions of God sitting on the left in a throne and Jesus sitting on the right and a clear living stream of water pouring out from beneath him, which seems to be a description of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Well, the left side of our brain, the right side of our brain, you know, the cerebrum, and our cerebellum seem to match those three items as discussed in the previous video. But how about more items, more matches? Well, before the throne of God there are two witnesses. It describes that there are two witnesses in Revelations 11.4. And one day those two witnesses <clears throat> will come down to the earth and they will preach for a long time, trying to turn the world away from its evil path. That's in the times covered by Revelation. But the two witnesses for the present time stand before the throne of God. And as discussed, we have two witnesses. Our head is sort of a reflection in some ways of the throne area of God. For another example, there are seven lampstands spoken of in the book of Revelation. Well, if these are our lamps, then perhaps these seven cervical vertebrae are reflective of our lamp stands. They're what allow us to look to the left, the right, up and down. They uh, aim, they point at our lamps. So we have another numerical connection where we have two witnesses and seven lamp stands. The very thing described in the book of Revelation. And something that's a little bit interesting is that the churches spoken to in the book of Revelation numbered seven. Seven churches in Asia. So seven seems to be a number sometimes associated with the church. And the Word of God is said to be like silver purified seven times in furnaces of clay. It's a connection between man and God. The Bible is. The Bible's words. The Bible's scriptures. The Word is associated with seven. The church is associated with seven. And what connects the governing portion of our body with the rest of our body has a relation to seven as well. And in sucked up against this, close and tight is of course our spinal cord, which is the actual conduit of communications between the throne of our body and the lower portion of our body. There seems to be a connection, possibly. It's all subjective. Let's take a look at the bottom of our brain. If we look at the bottom of our brain, we'll see the left side of the cerebrum, the right side of the cerebrum, and the cerebellum, which kind of looks like runulets of water, or uh, a cushion in this case, because it almost looks like something is seated upon it. Can you sort of see a seated figure? This is called our mesencephalon, and it has a lot of important cranial nerves that branch off of it. 24 of them, 12 on one side, 12 on the other but it kind of looks like a seated figure. This is typical of the way you'll see it in many medical books. These are cut off nerves. This is our spinal cord, shown cut off just because they drew it that way. This portion I think looks like the head of a being. See, eye, eye, and then above the eye, a forehead plate such as a high priest wore. And this cut off nerve and that cut off nerve look a little bit like a crown, as if it's a royal personage. This looks a little like the chest, and this looks like outthrust arms. These are cut off nerves as well, part of the 24 nerves. 
And then it looks like it's seated. All these hair-like lines are additional smaller cranial nerves. And this, that looks like the lower legs of the seated figure, is just it, showing it as it, as it continues into our spinal cord, which is shown cut off right there, but which would, of course, continue down. It's kind of like Father, Son, Holy Spirit in a certain way. I, if there is something meant to be reflected there, perhaps it is that. Because we pray through the Holy Spirit to heaven, and heaven works through the Holy Spirit with us, so it's a go-between. Well, any command that our brain sends pretty much goes through here, unless it's one of these 24 cranial nerves, and it goes down to the part of our body that needs to receive the command. Similar with the Holy Spirit, right? Commands from heaven go through the Holy Spirit down to the world, or the body of Christ, the church, you know. Um, the people who need to find out about God, all, the, all us humans. Whereas if you stub your toe, or have an itch, up it comes through your spinal cord, and your brain learns about it. It passes through the mesencephalon, and it's processed by the brain. Just like, you know, if you pray to the Holy Spirit for help with something, your prayer would pass in a similar way up to the throne room of heaven, or whichever designate God should choose to deal with it. So, yet another time, you have the 24 elders that are before the throne. I haven't yet spoken of them. In Revelation chapter 1, chapter 4 and 5, and chapter 22, it has these throne descriptions, and it says that there are 24 elders seated before the throne. Well, it's an important number up in heaven before the throne, and 24 is an important number down here in the controlling element of the human anatomy, or our brain. Match. Moving on. The bottom of the human skull has a certain look to it. This is a depiction of the bottom of the human skull. It shows the lower jaw removed. So you're looking at a skull with no lower jaw. What you're seeing is, as you probably guessed, the upper teeth, the navel passages, the cheekbones, which are actually arches, zygomatic arches, and you could pass a pencil through this hole if you had a real skull in your hand, perhaps. Um, these are valleys in the bone or declivities around a hole. The, the hole for the carotid artery is right there, but around it there's like a little valley. And there's two carotid arteries, so there's one on each side. And they kind of have the looks of eyes because of that. This just shows where the spine connects. I can't correlate it with any feature of the human face. But then, of course, this kind of looks like, even though it's an upside down skull, it kind of has the outline of a human head or, you know, the being that's somewhat like a human. And the interesting thing is that it kind of has the appearance of a stern figure of some sort. And God, as we know, looks down upon our heart our whole life long, watching our motivations and our inner thoughts as well as our speech and our deeds. And uh, this, since it's pointed downwards and sits upon our neck, effectively looks down upon our heart as well. It's almost as if when medical technology came around to the point where people were looking at skulls frequently and they happen to look at the bottom of the skull, it might put them in mind that there's somebody who watches them all their life long. That'll conclude the second video.